All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Be, Be, Be Bold, DE&I as a tool for class engagement hosted by the Brown Alumni Association of Class Leaders. My name is Sarah Gomel. I am class of 2006 and the ACL vice president. I am so happy you could be here with us this evening. And I know that that's shared by my co-host and the training committee for the ACL. Um, and I'm, it's my pleasure to sort of introduce what the agenda is for tonight and take you through some housekeeping items before we dig into some of the great content that we have for you in store. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about what is the Association of Class Leaders? Because we understand that we have new class leaders joining us at this time of year, and you might not be so familiar with our activities. We're going to be talking a little bit more about two of our committees, the DEI committee and the communications committee in particular. And then the real meat of tonight's event is DEI for class leadership. And we'll be having Bill Taylor take us through that. Now, uh, we will also be having an interactive portion of the agenda, the breakout room discussions that we hope you can all join us for before we come back here to sort of the main stage for the thank you and closing. Now, again, my name is Sarah Gomel. Um, it's been my honor to serve on the ACL for these past four years, and I am the ACL Training Committee Chair. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what the Training Committee does in a minute, but it is really my pleasure to uh, to welcome you here tonight. Um, this is our third training this year and perhaps a little familiar if you got to see some of what we did at the Volunteer Summit in March. Now, a few housekeeping items before we dig in. Uh, are, we are planning to have this webinar last for about 45 minutes in total. And for the first 20 minutes or so, we're gonna be having opening remarks for myself, Marco Martinez, Bill Taylor and Jenny Pritzker. A portion of our session will be recorded. If you want to opt out of being recorded, please turn off your video cameras. Please take a moment now to rename yourself in Zoom. You can see uh, as I did that I added my class here. We invite you to enter your class years as well uh, by using the rename function in Zoom. If you have any questions or comments, we ask that you stay muted as you are now, and please use the chat and reaction functions on Zoom to ask answer or excuse me to ask any questions. And we have someone monitoring the chat to answer those for you as well. So once we finish our opening remarks for the last ten minutes of the webinar this evening, we will be divided into smaller breakout groups, which will be an opportunity for you to get to know each other as well as continue the conversation based on our topic this evening. Um, we understand that you might need to drop off and that is fine if you have to, but we do hope that you will stick around and join us in conversation. Each breakout room will also have a moderator from the Brown ACL board. I'd like to take a moment to thank our volunteers from the board for moderating our chat this evening. And now to get into the real stuff, the moments we've been waiting for, um, our goal this evening is to provide you training valuable information for class leaders on how to use diversity, equity, and inclusion, DE&I, in your work as Brown alumni leaders, and also tonight to facilitate some connections between class leaders, both new and experienced. Now, uh, I want to take a quick moment here to pause and just talk a little bit about what the Association of Class Leaders is. The ACL is a cross-class um, organization that works to keep alumni engaged in the Brown community through class leadership. The Board of Advisors is elected by the ACL, and you as a class leader are already a part of the ACL. We try to uphold the very best of Brown spirit and traditions. We also, of course, support class volunteers, um, all class officers, all roles through trainings like this evening's, providing resources and tools that you can use to effectively lead your class and engage both around reunion and in between reunion years. And also we try to serve as a conduit between Brown University and alumni by publicizing alumni, class, and university events and news. 
We have four committees that help us do this work. So the ecosystem of the ACL, if you will, is the communications and outreach committee that communicates via newsletters and online. Jenny Pritzker is gonna talk about that and DE&I a little bit later this evening. We also have, of course, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Marco Martinez is going to lead us through a little bit about their work um, this evening as well. We also have an engagement committee that works to engage both in person and virtually. So if you haven't taken a moment, please do so this evening and join both the ACL Facebook groups and the Instagram account. Uh, the Instagram account's handle is at BrownUACL. Um, and then of course, uh, my favorite committee because I am the training committee chair is the training committee that works to put on uh, virtual and in-person events like this to get tools and resources and best practices out and hopefully um, help class leaders find out a little bit more about what other classes are doing in as inspiration for their own activities. And now it is my pleasure to hand it over to Marco Martinez, who will be speaking to us a little bit about the DE&I committee. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marco Martinez, class of 2008, currently located in South Texas. Um, I am uh, an ACL board member as well, uh, former BULAC president, and I'm an active participant of the Brown Club of Austin and the Brown Club of the Rio Grande Valley that I um, assisted in founding in 2008. Um, so I'm a pretty active member um, as much as I can uh, within the alumni committee. And thank you all for, for attending uh, this evening's webinar. Next slide, please. Thank you. Up oh, previous slide, there we go, thanks. Here we have, um, it's a lot of words. It's our overarching goal, um, the reason uh, for our efforts and in a nutshell, um, DE&I, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, our committee is focused on strengthening diverse and inclusive leadership on all levels uh, for all class alumni. Uh, what this looks like is provo uh, providing support in any way that we can and doing and uh, enacting all of our actions, our events, our resources, with a lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, uh, I will provide this later, but I just wanted to provide and give a, a more of a glimpse of what we do. And at the end of the day, it's about being as inclusive as we can um, and in everything that we do. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. A couple of the things that we have been working on, some of our, our efforts, we break up what we do into two components. One would be leadership resources and the other would be diverse recruitment. As you know, as we move up in the leadership hierarchy, we wanna ensure that we um, recruit people who are passionate, who are tenured in their um, activity as Brown alumni, so that we can provide as much support and resources to those who are entering the new leadership components at whatever level. Um, some of the things that we've been working on currently uh, within the DNI community is what we call a D and I health check um, within your class leadership activities. Uh, what this would look like is an internal review or report card, uh, a two by two, if you will, where you. Um, internally kind of discuss your grows and your glows and how you can become a better uh, class resource with, again, with that lens of DE&I. So it's a self-score guidance and how to improve on all areas and, uh, and needs of development. So you're constantly working on the things that you're really good at, but also improving on the things that need some more work on. Another one of our tools that we are in the works um, and we'll be revealing very soon is a DE&I calendar. This is an all-encompassing calendar that we will share with all of our class leaders uh, that keeps track of observances, events, holidays that help us keep us focused and uh, celebrate everyone uh, that is part of our, of our diverse alumni community. Ultimately, what we're trying to create is a leadership uh, pipeline, a resource of tools uh, to again, help incorporate as much diversity and equity and inclusion from the top down um, within, within our, our, our leadership roles. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. 
Now, all class leadership uh, positions we have here, we have, um, again, they're elected. You have your president, your co-president, your vice president, co-vice co presidents, um, communications chairs, and so on and so forth. And um, in each of these roles, again, it's a finite amount of time, and we try to incorporate our goals and execute them collectively and individually. Um, but it's also making sure that those that we represent and those that we are leading uh, that we do everything again through that lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we have a plethora of resources and we're trying to make them as user-friendly, as easy to navigate and easy to access. So when we are planning events and organizing ourselves as individual leaders uh, within the alumni community, but also as a group that we have access to these tools, know how to utilize them, but also know how to seek support and where to get that support when it's, when it's, um, when it's in need. So uh, again, that was a very brief uh, explanation of the many things that we are doing within the ENI. Um, and we're hoping to include a more robust and inclusive set of resources for everyone who's leading their respective classes and ultimately Brown. Thank you so much, Marco. Um, and thank you and to the committee for all the tools and resources and information you're providing to class leaders. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Bill Taylor, class of 75, who is going to take us through DE&I uh, for class leadership tonight. Bill? Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> I need control, please. Hmm. Okay, well, somebody will help me through this by moving the slides along. Um, can I go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm gonna start off by first, again, Echoing what Sarah said, I want to thank you all for being here, for taking the time and showing interest in, in talking about how you might improve your DE&I engagement. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking to you about things that I think can help you, but I need to first give you my disclaimer. Even though this is a DE and I, even though this is an ACL event, what I'm going to tell you, I'm not really speaking on behalf of the ACL. I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I think my perspective on things are fairly centered, but I, I realize that there are there are things that I may say that everybody will not agree with. So please do not be mad at the ACO. You can just be mad at me if I say something that's not particularly popular. Okay, so what is DE&I engagement? I want, for, the, for the sake of tonight's discussion, I wanted to first start off by defining engagement. Engagement is, I want to define as the level of participation by your classmates at your events the level of participation by your classmates at your events. Okay, everybody agreed, that's all agreed, that's what engagement is. So let's talk about what DE&I engagement is. So let's, I, I, let me see if I understand my audience. Does anyone here not want maximum engagement of their classes? If you do not want maximum engagement of your class, classes, type me in the chat box. Me means I don't want maximum engagement. Okay. Does anyone here not want their events to be inclusive? Not me. <laughs> Does anybody not want their events to be inclusive? I mean, if you want your events to be exclusive, just really exclusive and not include as many of your classmates as possible, say me. Okay. Now, last question. Does anyone here, we know we want you want maximum level of participation. You want it to be inclusive. How many people do not want their events to be diverse? They only want one particular set of, one type of classmates in your events. Say me. Okay. So, I mean, so what is de &I engagement that's different from engagement? I, I really don't like the fact that engagement has been sort of claimed is not being de and I. To me, when we say engagements, we should say, we should think de and I engagement, because that's really the only kind of engagement there is. And if you don't mean de and I engagement, you should just say, no, I want exclusive, non-diverse, you know, kind of engagement, non-equity engagements. Okay. Maximizing your engagement always means improving diversity and inclusion in your class events. Always. If you don't maximize 
by having more non-diverse, you don't maximize your engagements by having non-diverse exclusive events. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna offer eight suggestions that I think will help you improve the engagements at your class events. In other words, I think they will involve changing your perspective. They're not specific tools per se all the time because every class is different. But I'm, my point is to make is to kind of change your mindset about what DEI engagement is all about. Next slide, please. The first thing I want to tell you is be intentional. We agree that our goal is to maximize our event across our classmates. So let me another one of these questions for you. Does anyone here think it would be better to keep that goal a secret? Let's keep it a secret, y'all, that we want this. We want to maximize our DEI. Say no if you don't, okay? Does anyone here think only the class leaders should know about the goal? No. One of the best ways to improve engagements, yes, including DEI, is to communicate that goal to your classmates. Communication is, is key. Be intentional. Letting your classmates know you want the event to be inclusive and diverse can, and the, the diverse can only help you reach your goal. For me, I wish that was a way I could send out a big back signal to my classmates saying, all oh, classmates, we want all your participation and engagement. Send out the back signal. Here we are, come, come see us. You can't, if you don't, I don't know of any leader that's a decent, I don't know of any leader, never less ACL leader, that has a goal that they don't communicate to everybody involved. Communication is key. Next slide, please. When I ask white people, what they worry about when greeting a person of color, they invariably say they are afraid they will say something wrong, something offensive. So they generally are reluctant to fully engage and often come across as very guarded. Now think about that for a second. You're, you're afraid of saying something wrong. So you're very guarded. What does that say? What does it mean? If you're, if you're generally fearing saying something offensive to a person of color, what does that mean? What I wanna know is why would anybody not greet or approach person, people of color the same way they greet everybody else, right? You don't need to be different. You don't need to be guarded. I need to tell you, it is so obvious to me when white people are being guarded. I'm not sure whose fault that is. I think it's partially mine. Perhaps I need to do something to make them feel more comfortable, more relaxed. But I think it is largely the society we live in these days. We are all hyper aware and sensitive, which can lead to inauthentic engagements with each other. Let me say that again. I owe my friend Mary Ward. I have to tell, say the second time. She, she helped me with this, you ready? We are all hyper aware and sensitive. Which, 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 what happens then? That leads us to have inauthentic engagements with other people. And it's not just like, we all have that problem, right? We all have that problem. I once explained to a white friend that is so obvious to me when white people are being guarded around me, she told me she perfectly understood. She said, most women can tell when a man is looking at them as an object. And it's not because of anything they say, she told me. She said, I can be standing in front of someone and she can tell they do not perceive me as a fellow human being. I'm an other. And she's right. That's that feeling you get when someone else perceives you as other, even if they just, it, oh, you're other, so I gotta be careful around you. Newsflash, everybody. Your minority classmates are used to people not saying everything quite right, quite right. I don't care whether the classmate is gay, Jewish, black, Latino, Asian, whatever. Trust me, if you say something wrong, you will not be the first person to make that mistake with them. We live in America. You just, just you know, you're not gonna be the first one. As a matter of fact, if 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 my if my friends saying something wrong made a mistake with the measuring rod, I would have no white friends. Bill Taylor would have no white friends. I think all minorities expect friends, especially new ones, to sometimes say the wrong thing. So I would suggest not worrying about offending your classmates. Instead, risk being genuine when greeting your classmates. Being genuine is the best approach with everybody, regardless of race. I never, I have never made a new friend being guarded. I have never made a new friend being guarded. So here's, here's the takeaway. Stop treating your encounters with your minority classmates as something you need to survive. Instead, think of it as something to be enjoyed. Encounters with all classmates are something to be enjoyed. Next slide, please. 
Be bold. <laughs> be bold. Count on the goodness of your classmates. How many groups can you name that would be more comfortable talking together than your brown classmates? I contend very, very few. Certainly not my neighbors, not my work colleagues, and probably not even my fellow church members. How many groups can you name where, you, where there is a more genuine, natural respect shared among each other than among your brown classmates? Again, very, very few if you ask me. So be bold and creative in picking topics for your class events. Don't worry about being offensive or looking stupid. You're way past that with your classmate audience, trust me. There are so many appealing topics that you can choose to have with a group of classmates than what you can have with any other group that you might encounter. I will share one example. My class had a panel discussion about how do we feel about race now versus when we went brown. Now we had this thing at the height of when they were talking about the taking down the monuments and all of that. So that was a, a year or two ago. Now, one of the things that always bothered me and I was very sad about is that when we were at Brown, we voluntarily segregated ourselves at meals. Does that make any sense to you? We're together in the classroom, we're together on the ball fields and all of that. But when we came into the ready, the black classmates sat here and the white and other classmates sat there. I mean, it wasn't uniform, but pretty much, you know, black solidarity was, wow, we gotta sit together. Do you know that when we, that when, at that race discussion, that it was by far the most well-attended event that we had. And it was some remarkable moments, including, believe it or not, several of the white classmates acknowledged they wished they, had, they hadn't segregated at meals. And several of the black classmates shared that they didn't want to segregate either. But they didn't feel welcomed by the, cla by the white classmates. And several white classmates said they had wished they had done something to make the black classmates feel more comfortable. Now remember, and we in the class of 75, we had 1,100 students, 100 blacks. We were 9% of the class. We weren't 10%. 1,000 class, 1,000 whites, only 100 black classmates. But in this, in this event, we actually told each other, we shared, we got bold, we had a conversation. It was truly wonderful, but it took us 45 years to get really bold. The result was incredibly cathartic and it really heightened the bonding for our class. I would say my class, the class 75 now, is more together now than we were when we were, in, when we were at Brown. So I can give you witness, camaraderie among your, black, your Brown classmates is real. And it's okay to be intentional and trust in the goodwill when making bold decisions to help improve your engagement results. Got that? Next slide, please. Diversity is relative. Each of us has a different idea of what diversity means. For some, it means having more classmates of color participating. For others, it may mean better having a rep better representation for female classmates. Regardless, whatever you, maybe, maybe you wanna have more gay classmates. Regardless, whatever you do, don't fall for the mistake, don't fall for the mistaken that people of color, your classmates, black, white, gay, straight, whatever, just wanna be with others only like them. Sometimes it can be expected to have heavy representation from one demographic. Example, if you were having a discussion about the struggle that female classmates had at Brown or continue to have in their current pursuits, in that case, perhaps more female classmates be being engaged. But the point is, if it is not an intentional result, there's a de and I problem when primarily only one demographic of your classmates participate. Only white males or only people of color, or only female classmates, whatever it is. But please keep in mind, I want you to be confused by what I'm saying. Regardless, the problem is never the classmates who participate. The problem is something else that you miss. Perhaps you just didn't promote the event effectively. There is no wrong demographic group when it comes to engagement. There is no wrong demographic group when it comes to engagement. For the avoidance of doubt now, I, I wanna be clear that, you know, I, this, is, this is, they told me not to go off cuff, but I always go off cuff here. If Bill Taylor comes to visit one of your class events, I should not be confused about whether I made a wrong turn and wind up at the Trump rally, right? Trust me, the problem will not be the color of your audience. The problem will be the content of your event. Got it? Follow what I'm saying? The problem is not the color of your audience. The problem is the content. Your mindset for success needs to be you want all groups to be well engaged in the content of your events. Now, what does that mean? For example, Suppose you're having a trivia event. 
perhaps you need to give your thoughts, give some more thought to your question selection. Let me explain. Again, I'm gonna go off track a little bit here. When I was at Brown, I never had a black professor. I never had a, a, a Latino professor. And I suspect my experience was more the rule as opposed to the exception. Now, if I was doing an event, I might say something like, one of my questions might be, well, what year did Emma Page graduate? Yeah, there's a nice fact. It's not controversial. It might say, well, when did the first black female graduate from Brown? That would be non-controversial. But what I really like to know, I would say, I would say something like, in 1975, what, how many tenured black and Latino professors did we have? And you could say, you know, zero to five five to 10, probably wouldn't go much more than that if you asked me, it would be my guess. <laughs> but the next question would be, how many do we have today? Now I know we have uh, somebody from the trustees on here and I, I hear rumor has it that, that they've reached their goal, they doubled the number of you know, tenured professors of color, that would be great. If that's the case, and you know, that would be great news. You see, if you're having a trivia event, let's, let's do something that would make your, your, your classmates more interested. It's funny now. I did have. I want you to know. I did have a, a, a professor who was um, of Asian ancestry, um, and it was in the music department. I, I my, it was my senior year. My my favorite class at Brown was East East Indian music. Yeah, you go, and the, and the professor, you know, music from India always interests me, and it always sounded the same. So we go to you go to the, the auditory lab. You put the headset on. You listen to the music, and then you go back to class. And they talk about it. You know how all American American music is different. It is, there's all different kinds of Indian music. And I always thought that was so interesting. That was my favorite class. And it wasn't because necessarily it was the only class I had at Brown where the professor was a person of color. It was just a really interesting class. But I, I do, my point is, you, you would be surprised. We got this wonderful curriculum, right? We got this wonderful, you know, the Brown curriculum. We can do what we want. We can try anything. But what's the point if you don't have diversity, right? You need to have diversity of professors, diversity of topics. Likewise, the same thing is true with your events. You want to have as much diversity as you can to engage everybody. So if you're doing something, even for trivia, be creative, add some, add some DNI trivia. Next slide, please. This is a big one. Be aware of minority bias when making decisions, majority bias when making decisions. You know, too often, Attempts to improve DNI involve an element of what I call majority bias. What is majority bias? Let me explain to you what that is by example. When selecting menu options for a class event, there may be a quick agreement on the need for a vegetarian option, right? So if there are three menu selections, a decision would be made to have a vegetarian entree. I would describe that vegetarian option as, you ready? Take it or leave it. Because that's what it is. I mean, it's one choice. How can you call that an option? You just say, vegetarians, take it or leave it. What kind of option is that for a vegetarian classmate of the spouses? In that, in that scenario, vegetarians have only one choice and non-vegetarians have three choices. Does that seem welcoming to that member of the minority community? Be honest. Let's, let's, just, be, let's just call it what it is. It's like checking the box. Oh, we have some vegetarians. Let's make sure we have at least one vegetarian entree. We're not worried about their enjoyment. We call it, I call it, well, let's make sure we make some vegetarian considerations. D and I approve, check, box checks, come on. Suppose there were four menu options. Three, three were vegetarian and one was a meat option. Take, take a thing, think about that. How would your class respond? Now really, you, you, your meat eaters have four choices. The vegetarians had three, but you know, people would complain, right? Majority bias is fairly routine. Majority bias in your selection and your decision is fairly routine. The sad thing is, you ready? Vegetarians are used to being treated that way. After assuring the pleasure of your non-vegetarian majority, the feeling of the minority vegetarians are given a somewhat superficial nod. My perspective is classmates of color are like vegetarians. And the sad thing is we are used to decision makers simply trying to check the box as far as making them feel welcome at a, under a DE and I banner. We had a dance party at our class, you know, when, when during the pandemic, we had a Zoom dance party, right? Somebody had to pick the music. Well, guess what? We had all gotten, we, we didn't just have one type. 
we had all types, Motown, you name it. We had everything. And it was, it was very, very successful. All you had to do is just track. So let me leave you with this. When making your class event decisions, try to treat your minority classmates with the same amount of considerations as your majority classmates. Class leaders need to be honest with themselves. If the majority versus the minority rules were reversed, how would you feel? If you remember one thing from this webinar, remember that thought. Don't stop and think of your minority classmates as a sort of a check the box. Think about their enjoyment, whatever it is. Next slide, please. Perfect is the enemy of good, y'all. Perfect is the enemy of good. Too often in, in pursuit of perfection, we're brown graduates, right? We want perfection. We miss the opportunity to do something good. For example, we want the perfect set of panelists when we have a panel discussion. Perfect expertise, perfect diversity. And we let limited vision of perfection result in our not doing it at all, or not giving that best effort. Oh, I can't find the right panelists. They're not diverse. Oh, this person doesn't have the right expertise. We can't do it, right? Come on. Stop that attitude. You know, my, I want to encourage you. de and I work is hard. You know, you don't know the right person, whatever. I'm not telling you it's easy. But there is no excuse for de and I mediocrity at your class events. This is, I'm sorry, there's no excuse for that. The best panelists are your classmate panelists, period. So do your best pursuing classmates as event leaders. Put in the time, research, research your classmates, make calls, ask other classmates to make calls, beg if you must, regardless, make your intention to, to clear as many classmates as you can, and don't worry if the panelists you get are not your vision of perfection. You will, you will know when you've done your best, and, and don't lie, you'll also know when you haven't done your best. Rethink what your ideal panelists would be, right? We think about it. No one, in, no one needs world-class expertise for a brown class event, <laughs> right? You don't need world-class expertise. In my opinion, I can't find a diverse panel I need, right, with the right expertise is simply lame. Funny thing about expertise, we all know people with plenty of expertise who make very poor panelists. Sometimes too, too much expertise is a mistake. So here's the hit. Find other classmates with diverse ideas and perspectives who share your excitement about a topic and then reshape the discussion plan to fit them, right? Here's another little hint. Remember, even if you can't get the panel of your dreams, have faith in your classmates. Classmates usually attend events related to their area of expertise, right? Oh, whatever it is, if it's my area of expertise, you know I'm gonna go listen to that. So even if I don't agree to the panelists, in my experience, that classmate would very likely support the discussions with comments from their position in the audience. Chances are you will discover that the classmate who would have been a great panelist will be participating from the audience. That's another path to de and I perfection. So just get as many, it's always best just to get as many panelists as you, as many classmates as you can to your events. Next slide, please. The moderator role can often be used to add diversity to your class event. Think about this. The moderator needs to have skills and is, a, and is key for a successful event. I give you that. But the moderator doesn't usually require significant subject matter expertise. If you're doing something on whatever, you don't need, a, you don't need the moderator to have expertise. Ideally, the best event moderator should be a classmate who is generally representative of the audience, not an additional panelist with significant expertise, your, your pool of, of potential moderators is much larger than you might expect, okay? So you should, you should, no matter what, because you don't need an expertise to be, you should always have at least one diverse person that you're moderating. If you need one, you should always have at least one. Avoid the ownership trap for your successful events. That is, spread the engagement around when you do things a second or third time. Whenever possible, figure out how to add another classmate or two to the leadership or moderator role of anything you do. Don't fall into the mindset that the original classmates now own that type of event and something successful can't be augmented the next time around. Try to be additive each time you do something, do an event. Try to engage a different moderator, a different leader, 
each moderator comes with their own set of close classmates. And the more diversity you generate in the moderator position, the more engagement will be, more your engagement will be improved. In other words, class leaders should always be building bench strength among their classmates for class events. Got that? Class leaders should always be building bench strength among their classmates. And there's my last point. One more, next slide, please. Alumni relations and the ACL board, DE&I committee. Having good diversity on your class leadership committee is very important. It broadens the perspective when making decisions and it increases your compatibility when you're sharing your goals. The Brown Alumni Relations Department can help you in your efforts to improve the diversity of your class leaders committee. Amy, Alice, Jill, Mary. In my opinion, the Brown Alumni Relations Department is absolutely the best resource for everything you do. Everything class leaders do, your best resource is always gonna be alumni relations. So just let Jill, Amy, Alice, and Mary help you. They have a wealth of insights and experience which they have shared with my class to improve our engagement efforts. And they are particularly encouraging and supportive when I really need them, when you really need them, you can count on them. Ready? Shame on any class leader who doesn't take advantage of the support you can get from alumni relations on issues, including DE&I. Shame on you. I don't even want, I, you know, stop it. If nothing else, they know the people on the ACL board, right? We, you heard Marco talk about we have a DE&I committee. If you want to connect with somebody, check with them. They can, they, can, they can make a connection for you. You don't have to know people. And not only that, don't, don't be limited to your class. If you want to find somebody, talk to somebody that's not exactly your class. That person may know somebody in your class that you don't know. Work your network. Okay. And of course, I got to I gotta give, I, I, I'm going to, I know who's coming. I'm going to re re make two points last time. Communication is key. Communication is key. Don't kid yourself. If you don't talk to your classmates, you're not going to get it done. They're not going to know what your goal are. They're not going to know what you're trying to do. And you will, you will mess up. And even if you mess up, you will, you, if you keep talking to your classmates, you communi keep communicating. Somebody will say, wow, that Bill Taylor. Oh, wow, that guy, he's really, he's really serious about this. He's not, he's not going to give up. I told him no the first time. I told him no the second time. I'm going to tell him no again. Well, okay. I'm just, I guess I better tell him yes once so he'll leave me alone. Communication is key. Keep talking to your classmates. That's it. Thank you. Bill, thank you so much for your candor, for your wisdom. And I hope that everyone in attendance tonight took away some actionable tips, some inspiration, no matter where you are on the, your personal DE&I journey, and certainly as your DE&I journey as a class leader. And now it's my pleasure to pass it over to Jenny Pritzker, who's going to speak on DE&I and communications for class leadership. Hi, um, I'm Jenny Pritzker. I'm class of 2000. I'm chair of the communications committee of the ACL. I'm also president of my class and um, I'm co-president of the Brown Club of Philadelphia. Um, so I'm here to talk about communications and basically in the ACL, we use different modes of communications to connect with the, with the ACL and with all of the class leaders including social media and a quarterly newsletter. Our goal as the communications committee is to keep class leaders engaged by reaching as many class leaders and by keeping them up to date on what's going on in the ACL and what is going on on campus. When there are training tools or documents for best practices, we make sure that those materials reach as many people as possible. How can this help encourage DE&I engagement? There are lots of ways that it can help. First of all, we are all aware that many classes have a DEI chair, but some do not. And that's a decision made by the class leaders on a case by case basis. For the classes that do have a DEI chair, we want to provide materials and training to help them do the best they can in that position for their class. For the classes that do not have a DEI chair, we want to make sure that they have the tools that they need to make sure that all class leaders are seeing things through a DEI lens. My class, the class of 2000, for example, does not have a DEI chair. Uh, we decided that DEI should be part of all of our leadership positions, and that was a conscious decision. 
Whether the classes have a DE&I chair or not, it's important that their communication chairs are thinking of DE&I when they communicate with their classes. Whether this includes recognition of holidays and events, in using inclusive wording in their communications, or just having DE&I in mind, we are there to provide resources to help them do all of this. As a class communications chair, DE&I chair, or other class leader, you can use our tools from the ACL to encourage DE&I engagement. These are small steps that you can take. If you're not sure where to start with incorporating DE&I into your class communications, just think about it this way. Communicate in a way that you are speaking to everyone and being inclusive. These topics are really important and we want to make sure that all class leaders understand not only how important DE&I is, but also that the ACL is there for them to provide resources, guidance, and help with how to incorporate DE&I into how they operate. These resources are for everyone and they should be used to engage as many class leaders as possible and enable them to engage as many classmates as possible. And you know, with that in mind, you should make sure to check out the tools and resources page of the ACL. And also, um, I hope you've all received our newsletter. And if you haven't, please make sure that your contact information is updated on the Brown Alumni website. Um, thanks, everybody, so much. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, and now we are actually at time. So I know some of you might have to drop off. I just want to thank you so much for joining us this evening.